The Lightning 2 targeting pod on the Viper is incredibly bare bones at the moment, so we'll only go over the basics very quickly. Switch to air to ground mode, master arm on, laser on, and ensure that the right cheek hardpoint has been powered up during startup. Select TGP from our right MFD, or you can place it on the left MFD by selecting any of the bottom options twice, and then select TGP. Select standby from the top left and choose air to ground mode. We'll now see an image on the display showing our targeting pod camera. We're lacking in most details but we can see our master mode, wide or narrow setting with narrow field of view shown within the box corners on the centre of the crosshair, and the crosshair itself showing our target. Our current zoom level from 0 to 10, the override button which will blank out the pod putting it into standby for now, our current altitude, camera mode, either TV, IR with white hot or black hot, and our laser spot search code. Do not confuse this with our laser designation code, which is not shown. If the laser is armed, we will see the letter L appear. When the laser is firing, we will see this letter flashing. There is also a small white square that shows where the pod is looking, with the center being directly beneath our aircraft, the edges being the horizon, and the relative direction around, if you imagine our aircraft were centered in the middle of the display. By default, our weapons will be in CCIP mode. In this mode, the targeting pod supports you by slaving to the impact point of our weapon. Firing the laser in this mode will quickly range and help improve the accuracy of our aiming solution. You can cycle the weapon mode to our gun by pressing the nose wheel steering button, pressing it again will switch to CCRP mode, and once more will take you back to CCIP mode. In CCRP mode, targeting pod will lock onto our selected waypoint by default. This is also our CCRP aimpoint. This is displayed on our HUD as a box. If it is beyond the HUD limits, you will see a cross through the box, with a director in the top centre of the HUD to point you toward it. We can cycle through our waypoints with the rocker switch on our ICP. Note how the targeting pod follows them. Whilst we are here, we'll configure our laser code. Hit list on the ICP, select 0 for the MISC category, and then 5 for laser code. We can then set the laser code we desire, and the laser spot tracker code, enter the laser code to match our bombs, or LST to match the JTAC or buddy who is designating with their laser for us. Our laser guided bombs can only have their code configured in the mission editor for now. This is planned to change later so ensure you include the code for each aircraft in the briefing, or assume that it's the default 1688. We'll select the targeting pod as SOI, with the DMS switch down. SOI, or sensor of interest, is denoted by a white border around the display. With SOI set to the TGP, our HOTAS controls will now interact with the targeting pod. The HOTAS controls are as follows. TMS up will command the pod to attempt a point lock on an area, or enter area track mode if it is not already. TMS left will cycle the TV and IR camera polarity. The manual range knob controls our zoom level. This can be bound as either an increase decrease button or as an axis. The expand fov button will cycle between narrow and wide fields of view. And the first stage trigger will fire the laser. We can slew our camera with the radar cursor switch, which can be either an axis or directional buttons. Uncage will enable or disable the laser spot search mode. This causes the camera to pan left to right, seeking out an active laser designation on the selected code. This is useful if you have a buddy or forward air controller with a laser designating the target for you. When the spot is found, the pod will focus on that location for us. Lastly, we have TMS down. This will enter boresight mode, slaving the camera to our aircraft pointing forwards. We can see this on the HUD as a box. We could, for example, fly our target box onto a SAM site that's just launched, and press the TMS up switch to lock that general area quite quickly. Now, this is where things get messy, unfortunately. The targeting pod operates using offsets from our waypoints. It will always use a waypoint as the starting point, however, we do not have this logic implemented just yet, instead our cursor is directly moving our waypoint. You can see this behaviour on the HSD, 
as well as on the steer point page on the DED. This makes it very easy to get lost, confused or ruin our flight plans with the TGP. We should see the waypoint remain unchanged and an offset be saved as our TGP location which can then be zeroed out with the on-screen cursor zero button. Keep an eye out for this feature being added, you'll see the CZ button appear on the TGP page to reset the offset. As a result, for now, you'll have to be very careful with your waypoints and targeting pod. I would recommend creating a waypoint specifically for the target, or making use of an empty waypoint when using the targeting pod. Pressing the boresight command with a waypoint selected will effectively lose that waypoint, as it will track to the horizon with the targeting pod, so ensure you cycle your waypoints up to a number beyond your flight plan if you want to keep them safe. So we've got our laser code set, our laser guided bombs selected in CCRP mode, and our TGP is on target. Enter point track mode with TMS up, and we'll reference the HUD. Follow the standard CCRP steering cues, note the time until release in the bottom right. Hold the pickle button a couple seconds before, as the horizontal bar cue falls down to our velocity vector. The bomb should then release. We'll hold down the first stage trigger to find the laser until impact. There is no time until impact just yet, so you'll have to either guess or hold it down for the whole flight of the bomb. Remember, you can also use our TGP with dumb weapons to hit an approximate area, or use it as a CCIP bomb site. The targeting pod is very much undercooked and will be subject to significant changes as it develops. I'll be covering it with a detailed video later, when it's more functional. Until then, I hope you enjoyed, and happy hunting.